Many of the polymers that we care about are actually made up of molecules that are way bigger than the hydrocarbons that we just discussed. In fact, uh, we call polymers polymer from the Greek. Poly meaning many and mer meaning, meaning units. So a polymer is something that's made up of many repeat units. In fact, when I teach polymers, I usually talk about Legos, right? Let's imagine this backbone for a minute. You've got some sort of backbone molecule like this blue Lego piece, right? Then, since, pol since polymers can have more than bonds along the backbone, they, they can have bonds going up and down, for example, you could start to put other groups along the sides, right? You could have them be all the same group, like this, where they repeat one after another. Or you could mix things up. You could have it so that these are all on one side like that, but you have a different type of building block maybe alternating on the other side in between each one of these uh, building up like that. So this is what's so exciting about polymers. It gives you so much flexibility in building different structures that have different properties because this functional group might do one thing, whereas this functional group might do something completely different, right? So that's the idea behind it, is that these are covalently bonded along the chain. This is sometimes what we call the backbone, this long blue chain of atoms along the middle there. And then it has side groups off the side. Now the side groups can be lots of different things, right? There's many different radicals possible. For example, you can have a methyl group off the side. So imagine for a minute that you've got a long, continuous chain of carbon atoms, right? That keeps on going. This could be thousands of units long. You could have a group off the side that looks like this. It's a CH3 group. That would be a methyl group. Why do we call it methyl? Well, because CH4, the standalone molecule, is a methane molecule. And so if you take off one of those H's, you now have something free to bond. So it forms a bond with the carbon in that chain and forms a methyl group. You could also form um, ethyl groups or phenyl groups the same way, right? So if you had this is a carbon and a carbon. So this one's a CH3 this one is a CH2, this would be an ethyl group coming off the side, right? Now, those are just hydrocarbon radicals, but you can have lots of other radicals off the sides of this as well. For example, for example, what if you have an OH group off the side, right? If you have an OH group off the side, it becomes an alcohol, right? It's part of the alcohol family. You could have this C double bonded to an oxygen and then to an H, and now you've got an aldehyde. You can have alkynes, amides, amines, carboxylic acids, esters, ethers, ketones. There's so many different types, and this is just a small list. If you check out the full list here, take a look at this. You've got loads of different functional groups that can go off the side. This just goes on and on and on and on. So think about it. As a scientist, polymers are great because you can tune them to have lots and lots of different properties and functionalities. And that's because you have so many different building blocks. There's so many different little Legos, you know, building pieces that you could put off the side of these. You could have it go... You could have a great big side group go off the side that does something interesting, right? You could remove the side groups and have it just be a more linear polymer. You have lots of options there.